Linking. I'm going to get rid of the original initial stuff test. This one's days are numbered as well. It's time to make sure that things link correctly. Um, I'm going to do a short version of this without, oh no, in order to do this, I do actually need to um, do line processing, don't I? Um, it is not enough because links only happen when I'm parsing through the text. All right, yeah, okay, <laughs> forget what I said. Uh, let's do line parsing, allow things to have IDs. I'm going to serialize and attach the node before. Before we do anything else, and then I'm going to basically just override if the ID already exists. So now that this node exists, at this point, then um, I can iterate over all the lines and run through them as an operation. So uh, let's look at this. This comment is outdated at this point. We are basically in fresh territory. All right. Actually, just to have just to have a point of reference, um, I want to start this test back up again first. Um, because right now we have text parsing that sort of works within a specified set of, of criteria, very specialized scenario. Um, so I just want to redo that um, and make sure, I want to make sure that when, we, when I start parsing the lines differently that this will uh, continue working. Actually, what am I doing in here? Yeah, this should be, this should be up here. Whatever, it doesn't matter. All right, um, multi-line comments. That needs to return back something better. All right. Um, what's bad about this? Seems fine, actually. Let's make this a little bit cleaner while we're in here. Line one. Line two. And... Line three. All right, cool. Line one. Line two. Really? 
Hmm. Sure, whatever. Cleaner anyway. Um, what else do I want to check? I don't really care about links in here. I just want to see if that's passing. No, it's not. What did I do this time? We don't care about strict equal. We are looking for subset. Node is not going to work out. Cool. What's it yelling about? Line one, line two, line three. Oh, I'm not actually mocking process time. I'll probably want to change this to something else. That comma separated time looks wrong to me. Um, like I probably want to change this to only be one value inside there. Just like the millisecond value and nothing else. It doesn't need to be that like in depth. Just needs to be something somewhat consistent. Actual is undefined. Oh, because I'm not returning anything. Dumbest part about this. Testing. All right, cool. So now we'll be able to tell if I break anything with the new text parsing. Um, so I'm just going to work on this for a little while. I'll probably go quiet for a couple of seconds while I think about this. Um, so really, we just need to get rid of this whole map thing here and replace that with the other stuff. In fact, this can even just be deleted out. What we're essentially doing here is just um, 
setting the node.txt. Again, iterating over the, the node.txt and com converting it into the next form. But it is actually this one. So inside of this map, we need to be uh, doing the other stuff. And we do want to be able to do default handling. So we have a reference to the text in here, and really we kind of don't want to <clears throat> It's maybe not a bad idea to keep the text attached to the node this entire time. Cuz I am I'm building this node out of the comment and maybe the, the the node should not have the text attached. Maybe this should literally be the comment.txt instead. Um, up here, I'm modifying the comment.txt. That's kind of weird. I remember this. Yeah, because if I'm going to iterate over the entire thing, that's suddenly not a great idea. Well, once I've built the relevant nodes... I could iterate over the node separately, and in that case, it would actually be fine. That might actually be a lot cleaner because I do wanna, I do wanna have the text manipulation stuff up there. So yeah, actually. Then what I, what I really wanna do is, I've built this whole node thing here, and um. I want to close that off and have this be a completely separate thing. So I'm no longer looking at comments.foreach. I'm basically saying object.keys index.
basically the same thing, but like having these as two separate having these as two separate loops means that if anything like if I'm have a type code up here, if I have a dot type uh, append up here or something like that, all of the the textual stuff gets um it gets it gets put together correctly. And I don't have to worry about I don't have to worry about like okay is this halfway parsed or is this not parsed? It's like okay you have a bunch of nodes, none of them are parsed. Now we're going to parse all of them. All right. Except the only thing being that. I'm going to be, oh, that's why I use object keys. Okay, yeah. Because I'm likely going to be modifying these keys in place as I do this. Hmm. Yeah, should be fine. So I'm splitting these lines. I know that this is correct here. Cool. Uh, I don't need parentheses around that. What else am I forgetting here? Um, is this going to come back to bite me? Like, okay. Well, let's try it and see. Because that should basically... This should be feature parity right here nothing should have broken like this should be the exact same behavior and it is okay cool so this is the exact same behavior but right in this line we allow you to fall through Cool. So let's set up some other stuff. We would like to full fledged remove this line. And in order to do that, we just move this filter until afterwards, right? That's easy enough to do, right? Whoa. All right. Cool. So this will be the same exact behavior, except we'll run map on every line. If it's a blank line, we don't care. Cool. Same business. What that allows us to do, though, is we can just return null for some of these. Um, and now we need to be able to handle attachment and, um, let's do that in here. I'm, I'm doing all of this in like a single, basically huge line here. But, 
Um, eventually, this will, I'll, I'll abstract as much of this out as needs to be abstracted. It's just kind of like, this is something that took me a while to understand about programming. Um, and other people have hinted at this to me, and it took me, it just took me a long time to, to get this. But if you have a function that's only being used in one place, and you only want it to be used in one place, and you don't want it to be generalized, it's better to leave it in that one place than it is to automatically break it out. Even if that means that you have suddenly like a 100 line, a 150 line function instead of instead of a, a loose one. Because as much sort of like nesting as is happening here, you can still basically sit down and read through all of this in a single statement. Um, in fact, like the only thing that would be hard to read here is this right here where I'm saying like, okay, um, the uh, comments equals extractor source. The only th thing here that's hard to read is the part that's extracted out. Um, now, it's still a good idea to abstract that out because, like, eventually it needs to be extracted out anyway. Like, you want to be able to test things separately. You want to be able to do all this stuff. But um, especially, like, for right now in development, and, like, I'll probably s extract this stuff out and try to generalize it and make this into, like, make this into a um, something that's polymorphic or easier to to expand. But but for right now, like it's actually easier to read and easier to maintain to just leave everything in this place. Um, so that's a sidetrack. And the point being that we are now going to build a method that um, updates IDs. And that's also why I use all of these function things, is that very often that just means, oh, this is a separate block of code. And eventually I will probably extract it out. But for right now, I'm leaving it right here. Um, let me think about how I want to do this. We're going to need to do some bad stuff. Index. This is not the most performant thing in the world, but we really do care about keeping clean JSON, and I don't think it'll be that much of an issue. I'm not going to pre-optimize this if I don't have to. Let me just double check, just copy and paste the regex for this. All right, what am I doing for the, oh, I actually don't care about that. Where am I, where am I extracting this stuff out? All 
there we go. Holy crud. Holy crud. Cool. Jump back to the original part in cone. Well, I'm split by lines now, so I'm not going to have an end line. I'm going to search for the, the earliest space, but I'm not going to hit a new line. So the most elegant way to do this is just to check to see if I can find a space. And we'll come back and clean up all of this stuff again, as usual. But, um, yeah, so the ID is going to be in between the designator and whenever we first run into a space, because you can have text after an ID. So, index ID equals node and delete index key and it's not actually that simple we now need to do yeah this needs to be cleaned up a bit And this is what I was talking about, about being a little bit unsure about whether or not links should be an array or not, because... We basically need to manually rip out the existing link from the array. Hmm. Let me actually think about that for a second. Does it make sense? The problem is it's just such better JSON. Like it's such a cleaner format to have it be an array instead of like an object. I'm not even gonna worry about this for right now actually because right now links aren't supported. So I'm just gonna put a to do here and I'll come back to this later. And hey, this will be a thing that works pretty soon. Um, actually, no. Be, uh, this will only work until after I fix this. All right. Um, yeah. But this should have changed basically nothing. All right, cool. And it didn't. Um, and let's go in and actually look at, like, what are the new things that this gives us. So one of the things it gives us, let's rename this. This is multi-line comments. One of the things this gives us is single line comments. Uh, 
Um, because you no longer need to... Originally, you could only do that by this, by, by sticking this thing in here. Um, now you can leave that off. So single line comments like I've been writing all over the place, these will be supported now. Um, and let's reposition these tests so that they're easier to read. And basic format should actually be the first thing. Actually, maybe it shouldn't be, I guess. Okay, I guess we'll call this multiple comments. And we'll move it back down. Just moving code around without any real reference of why. Cool. Uh, so that is one thing that we have is single line comments. We also have another cool thing, which is we should be able to specify IDs now. about the text there. Cool. All right. Some of that stuff worked. Some of that stuff didn't work. Some of that stuff just broke. Single line comments broke because I did not name my variables correctly. IDs didn't work because IDs just flat out didn't work. Actual was only I. So I am not actually reading this the way that I should. Um, but that's an easy problem to fix. Um, I already know what the error is with that. Let's grab IDs in here. And is not length minus one. It's just length. Um, because I forgot that when you slice, it is not inclusive. Uh, or it's not, it slices at that point. So yeah, now everything passes. So now we can specify IDs. And just to be super cool, let's also, inside the switch statement, instead of, re instead of returning like a blank thing, let's return... The remainder, like let's return line dot slice end. Oh crud. Do I just to make things fun?
And just to double check and see if I know how destructuring actually works. Because I have not made a lot of good use of destructuring before, so this will be fun. Oh, yay! Okay. Um, so everything passes now, but this should also have the text set correctly. So if I say um, line 1 right after this... This should set the text correctly. Yeah, all right, cool. So not only do we have IDs now, um, we also have IDs that allow you to append lines. So I can do stuff like this. That's super handy. Um, that's a good enough time for me to stop and get some food. Um, when I come back, I am going to probably get linking working. Um, and possibly, possibly expand out some of the tests to, to check. I mean, we're not, we're not doing anything with the code block right now. That would be actually before I get food. Let's really quickly check and see if code block is working. If it's not working, I'm still just going to go and get food anyway. But, um... If it's not working, I'm still just going to go get food anyway. Uh, the downside of this is that this code is not... It's indented. Maybe I want to, like trim the indentation for code. That's something that I could do for you. I could calculate, like, what the base indentation of, like, the first line of code that you're looking at is, or, or what, the, what the line of code is that has the smallest indentation, and I could make that be base zero. Not going to worry about it for right now. Let's just check to see what this does. So this is going to be this is going to be this amount of indentation. I'm just going to yank this line. Um Let's see if that works. I'll be surprised if this does work. No, okay, this this broke. Objects didn't match. Oh, well, obviously that's not going to work. This needs to be zero. Okay, so this just flat out didn't get attached. So something something is clearly broken with with the code block. Um I'm going to fix that later. E even even when I come back, this isn't going to be top priority. Um even in the next video we're we're just going to keep on working on on linking. I think that linking is the top priority for this right now. Code block is is a nice to have.